Thanks for watching. Today we're taking a look at the X-Tool M1, which is a combined machine and it combines cutting, like blade cutting, and laser. So laser engraving, laser cutting, that type of stuff. And it's especially the second function that I am really, really giddy about and that I want to tell you a lot of stuff about in this video. Um, I hope that I managed to condense everything in this video as much as possible to still keep things interesting and not to get too nerdy or uh, technical. The X-Tool M1 is a great looking machine. It kind of looks like a copier, a scanner, a printer, um, something that doesn't look out of place in an office at all. Uh, now, where do you want to put this? You definitely want to put this close to a door, close to a window. You can get an air purifier box, which is basically a bunch of stacked filters on top of each other. I have that one for the snap maker as well, but I don't fully trust them. I don't think that there's any better option than just venting outside. There's a big hose that comes with the machine and you want to throw your hose out of the window. So just make sure that you're close to a window, to a door, and then uh, get rid of the hose. So make sure that you can vent out because venting out is great. It's definitely the best way to do it, especially in case you're cutting anything that can be potentially hazardous. So we're not gonna look at the cutting function with the blade all too long because that's not a function that I will be using super frequently, but as a dedicated laser machine, this thing will be really put to a lot of use. I've already put it through its paces in the past couple of weeks because I've had the machine now for uh, approximately two weeks where I've been really using it. And I can honestly say that I'm addicted. So I have made a couple of prototypes, done a couple of projects already that I'm going to show you one of in uh, this particular video. We're also going to make this into a final version in this video. So this is a prototype uh, part that I made that I will tell you about later in this video. First, we're going to look at some of the sticker cutting capabilities of this machine. A couple of important things to know. The machine has Wi-Fi, so there's no need to wire this up to your computer. In my case, my computer stands upstairs in my office, and that's also why I manipulate all of the software. And then the machine stands downstairs. There's no need to have a cable connecting the two. You also don't need to walk around with a USB stick. It will just send it through Wi-Fi. It will send the file through Wi-Fi and you are all good to go. And it works fantastically well. If you open the machine, there's a couple of things that you will immediately notice. Uh, one of them is uh, the axis of the machine, so <laughs> if that makes any sense. So it's essentially the same as a 3D printer or a CNC machine. You have two axes on the side, which is the Y, then you have a gantry, which is the X, and then inside the tool head, in this case, invisible, uh, like completely hidden from view, is the Z axis, which manipulates the height. Inside of that tool head, you also have your uh, laser diode. So in this case, this is a diode laser. Uh, this M1 is a 10 watt version. There's also a five watt version, but definitely if you can spend the money, go with the 10 watt version because it will make for way quicker results on your projects. Inside of that tool head, you will find a magnetic clip that will hold this blade. This is a drag blade with a plunger function, so you can adjust the pressure of your project using the X-Tool software, and with that it will allow you to cut various types of materials, like for example stick-on vanil, uh, regular vanil, cardboard, paper, plastic, textile, fabric, leather, whatever. Uh, you can't imagine how much is possible with this machine. We're also not gonna go over absolutely everything. I have a box of materials that uh, I got with the machine, but I'm not going to go over all of the stuff that is inside of the box. We're just going to go over what I think is interesting for us RC folks to uh, have a look at. So this blade with its plunger and its magnetic attachment works really, really well once you get a hang of it. I use the X-Tool software to simply design a font and uh, position it correctly on the vanilla and then cut this. This was my very first cut project just to have, and you can also tell it says test cut X-Tool M1, uh, just to have a look to see what it does to that uh, auto adhesive vanilla. And 
it works magnificent. So it works really well as well as I dare say uh, a cricket. The entire concept of this plunger blade is also the same as, for example, uh, a cricket. If you do not use the blade function, seeing that it does stick out from the bottom over here, do make sure that you take it out of that magnetic holder and uh, put it somewhere safe, just so you don't uh, cut your fingers or your hands when you're cleaning the machine or doing anything inside of the machine. So when not in use, just pop it out and tuck it away. Now, depending on what you're cutting with this blade, you want to adapt the cutting mat that is uh, on the bottom of the machine. So uh, in this case, there's like a big aluminum plate sitting in the bottom of the machine that if you're laser cutting, you want to put some prisms on so you have some airflow going on. But if you're using the blade cutting function, you get two different types of cut mats. One of them is for textiles and I believe also for leather which is a red one, which has a, a higher adhesive quality than the blue ones. And the blue one is the one you want to use if you're cutting, for example, these type of uh, stickers. It has a double protective film on it, so you take away the bottom film, press that one down to the bottom of your machine, and you take away the top film, you put your material on top of that, and then the blade does the rest once you have everything set up in your software. Now for me, the sticker cutting function is not something that I'm going to use very frequently. I take great pride in uh, cutting all of my masking by hand, but in some cases, like for example, if I want to customize a hard body, uh, if I just need to have like a quick sticker, this will definitely come in super handy. And it does a great job at cutting stuff in a really precise and exact way without any flaws. Uh, weeding this out was no problem at all. That's uh, kind of the same as what I'm used to from my other masking. And then also sticking it on, for example, this uh, tumbler. Uh, super simple to do. And I am very much amazed by the results, to be honest with you. The Xtool software works really great for the blade cutting function of your machine. So for any type of sticker work, any type of cardboard cutting, it works really well. However, if you want to really deep dive into laser cutting and having some really accurate measurements and making a technical drawing, the Xtool software is way too limited and you'd really need to use something else in order to get some good results. Now that brings us to the second part of uh, the functionality of the X-Tool M1, which is the laser cutting. It doesn't just laser cut, it also scores, it engraves. Uh, it is a very versatile machine. I have picked up two additional optional uh, accessories for the M1. Uh, one of them is the riser base. The riser base allows me to do without any of the I think finicky bits, because usually if you want to cut stuff that's a tiny bit thicker or a tiny bit uh, uh, higher, taller, you need to put some wooden blocks under your machine. I wanted to avoid that. Those do come supplied with the machine, but I wanted to avoid that. I want to have a setup that is a tiny bit easier to use. And I also want to be able to put some longer material in there in case I want to engrave, for example, an entire car chassis or a uh, whatever it may be. So for that uh, purpose, I got a riser base. The riser base comes with two transparent sheets of uh, orange plexiglass, just so you avoid damaging your eyes, but now in the front and in the back of the machine. So with that, you have closed sides and then you have an open front, an open back, and then the lid is also transparent of the machine. What also follows along with the riser base is a honeycomb base plate. And the honeycomb base plate ensures that you have some really nice airflow going through your project. And with that, you also get way cleaner and way nicer cuts. Any type of cutoffs just fall through the honeycomb into the base of the machine and they're really easy to pick out with the vacuum cleaner afterwards. The second optional part that I got for my M1 is the air assist. And what the air assist does is it's basically a little air pump that sits on rubber feet. It makes not a lot of noise at all if you uh, set it up completely freely. And you feed a little tube into the machine. You connect that also magnetically around the laser cutting lens. 
and what it does is it blows air as you are cutting away. By having a constant airflow, it avoids any type of scorching. So you don't get any burn marks. You get a way cleaner, way nicer cut. Any debris will immediately be blown away by the air assist. And uh, combined with that honeycomb, you get the cleanest cuts possible. Now, anytime you open the lid to your X-Tool M1, you hear a beep. And what it does when it beeps is it takes a picture of the contents of the machine and it sends that to your computer. And what that allows you to do is to really uh, accurately position your project on your material to make sure that A, it is positioned on the material correctly and B, you don't waste a lot of material making your project. This is an FMS Toyota FJ45. I think this is a great truck. There's plenty of reviews on these already floating around on YouTube. Today, however, I'm going to show you what I did to make this prototype in the back. And also we're going to finalize this prototype by making this from some basswood and walnut. I love France. I also love everything that is uh, French. So uh, back in the day, I have seen I think it was a Peugeot, like a 50s truck with a pickup bed such as this, driving around with like a, some sort of wooden buildup in the back. And I think it had like a Perrier commercial uh, written on the sides, something along those lines. So when I had this uh, Toyota, this FMS FJ45, I figured that I wanted to replicate something along those lines, but with like an imaginary beer brand. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. This, what you see over here, this is a prototype that I made. And I made this using three millimeters of uh, MDF. MDF is super cheap. It is really easy to cut. And in uh, its cutting properties, it is very much comparable to, for example, the basswood. What I did over here is I cut all of the stuff just to fit it together, give it a good test fit. Also put it inside of the truck and see if I needed to adapt some of the measurements, which I do. Uh, and I have already done that. But for that reason, I now have a completed cut file that we can just go ahead and uh, mess around with a tiny bit to hopefully complete that project in this video. You can use any type of drawing software to make a file like this. What you want to end up with is an SVG, which is a cut file. I created this SVG using Easel, and Easel is the software that is accessible through Inventables. Uh, and Inventables is the manufacturer of my CNC machine, of my X-Carve. I know my way around Inventables. I created the SCX6 Gladiator using Easel. And I also created the Yeti XXL using Easel. So using Easel on this project as well is super easy. It allows you to combine several different shapes and uh, by combining shapes, making complex forms such as this uh, bench, for example, or complex is not super complex, but complex enough to turn something that is 2D into something that is 3D. And as a first project, I think that uh, this came out pretty well. Now we're going to use two types of wood. We're going to use walnut. This all came in the materials package that came with the X tool. So we're going to use some walnut in three millimeter. And we're also going to use some basswood in three millimeter. And what I want to do with the basswood is I also want to engrave that on the outside with some sort of imaginary Hemistorm Brewery logo. So that's going to be put on the outside of these ribs. So we're going to put two boards on every side. And then uh, the benches, I also want to make those from that lighter basswood. And then the frame itself, I want to make that from walnut. And then whether or not we're going to clear coat this eventually, we will figure that out. First, I think we should just cut all of those parts. <laughs>
right, I've let this cure for a bit and it is now all dry. This wax oil is fantastic, by the way. You can just basically uh, dunk it in there and then you wipe off the excess and you end up with a really nice supernatural finish. And uh, especially in this case with the engraving, it comes out very nice if you just keep it a bit uh, natural and not uh, overdo it on the finish. So is this X-Tool M1, is this the ultimate machine? Is it a perfect machine? Um, it is really, really, really good. There are a few little uh, shortcomings, but they have mostly to do with the options that you start to add on to it. And uh, with that, you can also see that they have been kind of an, an afterthought. One of them is the riser base. If you operate the machine without the riser base, you have triangular prisms that you put on top of the base plate in order to laser cut uh, your materials and uh, with that you also you don't have to mess around with the base plate It can basically just stay in place the minute you add the riser base and you want to operate the machine using the honeycomb on the most upper level You do need to take out the base plate of the machine and with that you run into a couple of things that I would like to see improved one of them being the base plate is kind of big and you really need to uh, sort of maneuver it carefully through the opening of the top of the machine in order to get it into place. That means that you need to be extremely careful in order not to damage anything. And it is just a bit of a headache to get the plate back in there. Second thing is there are five screws keeping the base plate down. Uh, and then in the back there is a groove where it needs to sit. Uh, also those five screws are Phillips head screws and those screws they're made of cheese. So I replaced the hardware with some regular hex hardware but I would love to see that done from the factory. That's not a big investment for them. And even better I would love to see some sort of quick release to take out that base plate. I think it would also be beneficial if that base plate would consist of two different plates. Uh, that way you can just really easily slot it into position and then perhaps with some sort of easy release clamp, clamp it down, making it really easy to switch it out for that honeycomb. Second thing that I don't really like is the air assist. The air assist works really well, but in order to get it set up, I needed to mess around with it a tiny bit and modify it in my own way. I found that the hose that you get with the air assist, it tends to slip. And if it slips too far, it will drag your material and then uh, ruin your project. So what I did in order to secure my air assist was I zip tied it. That's of course not a big deal at all. But I also didn't like the way it was routed around the back. When the air assist is routed around the back, there is a cover plate that you need to take off the tool head, exposing some of the internals. And seeing that the laser cutting does produce some sort of debris and a lot of dust in some cases, uh, it can really mess up the inside of your tool head. So I wanted to keep that protective plate on the tool head itself. Now in order to solve that, I routed the air assist to the front rather than the back. And I also was able to put that protective plate back into place, covering up the internals of the tool head. I did need to modify it a tiny bit in order to be able to use the magnetic function of the air assist. But I'm really happy that I did that because it just protects the inside of the tool head a lot better than when you would keep it exposed. Apart from those few little things, I can't really see anything negative about this machine. I've had some really fast, really good success, I think, in using it. I have been able to knock out a few projects that I did not think would be possible in such a short time frame. Uh, not in the last place, the sticker cutting, because that as well is a super impressive function. It's just one that I won't be using as much as the laser cutting. Especially seeing that with the riser base, it's a bit finicky to uh, build the machine around to uh, rotate through those functions. There's a lot possible with one of these diode lasers. And I'm really looking forward to see what X-Tool comes out with in the future, because I have heard some rumors about a CO2 laser also being developed. Go check out all of the links in the video description box, not just for the X-Tool M1, but also for the FMS Toyota FJ45, because this is a really cool, super detailed, fun truck to mess around with, and especially seeing that it has such a big bed. There are a lot of possibilities here to make this your own and modify it to make it look cool. In the next video, you will see this FMS FJ45 again, 
but I will be adding something different to the back. Again, using the X-Tool M1. This is a very inspiring machine and I have found myself sitting behind my computer screen for a couple of days now to design some more cool stuff to put in the back of this little truck. So I hope I will see you then. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section and I will try to get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and if you have not subscribed yet, please do. Hope I will see you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye. Back on.